While everyone's complaining about how hard the new abyss is, and rightfully so, it is quite difficult, I thought I should show you guys some tips on how to make it as easy as possible for you. And I want you guys to know that most of these strategies that I'm going to be showing are highly unknown and most people don't talk about. So I can almost guarantee that there's at least one thing that you'll learn through this video. Also keep in mind, we're not going to be using many five star characters. I will go over when like the five stars are good, but in general, we're going to be using four star characters and some strategies uh, for everyone for every abyss floor. Obviously the new floors are 11 and 12 and we're mainly going to be talking about the hardest ones. So 11, three and 12, three, but also like 12, two and some general tips. While I show you guys some insane strategies to manage to clear uh, not only the abyss, but take care of the shield effectively showing you a way to take care of the, the tanky hydro shields without Ganyu and the electro shields in a very, very fast way. I want to keep this video kind of short, so I'm not going to be including like full clears, but I will have a lot of clips and I want to get right into the video. First of all, I want to give a huge special shout out to Zajef77, uh, my math guy and a theory crafter who helped me with this video and whose ideas inspired me heavily because he's really good at the game. So check him out, link in the description. And also I want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description as well. And with that out of the way, I'm going to try to make Abyss as easy as possible for you guys with these tips. Let's get right into it. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys tips for floor 12 and 11, both of them. But we're going to start with 12-3 because some of the most hated uh, content is there, like the most hated enemy. So as you guys know, in 12-3, Abyss sectors have giant electro shields. And they're usually very difficult to deal with, but there's a strategy not needing any five stars, just using Bennett to destroy it super quickly. For 12-3... Our first method is Thundering Fury Bennett. I've been using it on my stream like the whole time I've been clearing this abyss and it's actually broken. If you guys don't know why this is broken why, and why this makes 12-3, uh, at least the shields in the first half, a joke is because of how this works. Every time Bennett's going to trigger a reaction, right? So overload in this instance, your elemental skill cooldown is decreased by one second. Now, what that means is your E cooldown, right? Right now, the cooldown is uh, five seconds when I tap, but when I use it in my burst, it's reduced by 50%. And have another talent that reduces it by 20% just overall. And when you add all of those cooldown reductions up, you are literally spamming your E every second because I'm constantly overloading. I'm in my burst and I have, you know, my passes reducing it. And so I'm basically just spamming my E nonstop. I can do it on both lectures at the same time and destroy their shields. And I showed you guys in the intro, but basically, as you can see by the footage here, that these abyss lectures stand no chance against TF Bennett. Their shields get absolutely melted. So effectively, when you're running floor 12, I would highly recommend having a Bennett on your first half. He can still be your healer. You can still give him the normal artifacts, right? Energy recharge sands. Uh, that's the most important. Then if you can, like HP goblet or pyro and, you know, maybe healing bonus circuit or crit or whatever. But it really doesn't matter. Um, as you guys can see, my artifacts are really low level. I just have a healthy, like a plus 20 flower so I can heal and an energy recharge sands from a different set so that my Bennett isn't useless, right? I still get my burst all the time. I can still heal. But apart from that, he doesn't really need good artifacts to heal enough. And since he's on Thundering Fury, he can just solo shred the shields of the Abyss Lectors, making Abyss 12 honestly much, much easier. And not only is this tip like kind of unknown, but also people complain about 12-3 all the time. And this is an easy solution with a four star character who you don't even need to invest into. And also bonus tip, while you don't need any other characters to do this, I did it with just Bennett, literally like no one else helping him uh, destroy the shields. You can also use Jean. She's a five star, but you can use her to self swirl, use her burst with Bennett and uh, basically clear it faster. Also, another tip is that if you comp the enemies, you can use TF Bennett much more efficiently. As you can see here, they're spread out. So uh, if I'm spamming my E every second, I can only hit one and it's a lot slower than if I were able to hit both. Now, now obviously if you have Venti, this can be very easy, but again, I don't want this to be like a five star guy, like just use Venti. But Anemo MC, a free character, right? Your main character is actually really good at this and better than Sucrose and comparable to Venti because you can use your Tornado to push both of these Abyss Lectors together and then use TF Bennett to destroy their shields. And so my next tip I want to mention is how to clump those two Abyss Lectors so that your Bennett can hit both of them. Basically, uh, to displace enemies, you want your character to be high level. So uh, within 20 levels of the enemy. So if you're running Venti, it's very easy. But if you're running someone like an Emo MC, it's also really good. And I would recommend her over Sucrose for this uh, floor. However, you will need to level her to level 80. So um, if you are struggling with 12-3 and you want to clump them, you can use your main character, level them to 80 so that they're within 20 levels of the level 100 lectors. You can use your Q uh, and clump them together. Mine is only level 40, so I can't show this off. And that is because I have Venti, a pretty broken five star, so that's what I use, but uh, he isn't needed and a good four star alternative can be the main character to clump them up. And before we move on to the next section where I talk about a tip for 11.3 that I've heard nobody talk about, I just want to remind you guys, in case you don't know, once again, because this is a new abyss, not everyone knows, that 12.2 can destroy you super fast, especially the second half. So I would highly, highly recommend having a shield. So Zhongli, if you have them, if not Diona, the free four star can also work wonders in the second half of 12.2 on your second team so that you don't die instantly. 
Now we're gonna talk about Abyss 11.3 and how I managed to three-star it uh, using Chongyun. So no Ganyu, only four-star characters, as you can see, a four-star comp. Managing to three-star it using Chongyun to break the shields, as well as other strategies that you guys probably have not heard of. Actually, I'm willing to bet you probably have not heard of these. Before we get into the strategy involving, again, only four-star characters, I do wanna mention uh, that if you have Ganyu, obviously just use her on your second half, destroy the shields with her, and you'll, you'll it'll be super easy because she's the only character who can very efficiently deal with these uh, cryo shields, and you don't even have to invest into her much at all. You can just use her to destroy the shields, and you'll be fine. But with that out of the way, let's talk about how to clear this without Ganyu with the strategy that I'm going to show you guys. First of all, I want to say the Hydro Shield can be cleared by either Electro or Cryo. However, Electro, um, I have tested it a lot. And it can work, but it's very difficult to make work, especially because you're not freezing them. They split up, they run away. Um, whereas Cryo also can destroy the shield, but also freezes them. And you can like maybe try to freeze them together to hit both at once. And it's just a lot, a lot easier. So for that reason, not only do I recommend Cryo, but there's actually a strategy I want to show you guys. The character we're going to be using to destroy the shields is Chongyun, a Cryo character who makes a Cryo field where you can attack in it, freeze enemies, and uh, all your attacks are turned into cryo if you're using a sword, polearm, or claymore. And you want to pair them up with a sword or spear user, so, you know, someone like that. Uh, that can attack very fast inside the field without shattering, right? Because Chongyun has a claymore, so if he attacks a frozen enemy, it'll shatter it, unfreeze them, and be annoying. On top of that, polearms and swords attack faster than claymores, so you have that benefit of applying cryo faster. Now, you guys might have heard of Chongyun, and you're thinking, what's the revelation here? You know, I've heard people say Chongyun is good for the shields. I still can't clear it. What are you, why are you making this video? Well, let me show you. First of all, you might be noticing that my Chongyun has a special artifact piece, uh, a one-piece set, making me affected by Hydro for 40% less time. Now, as you guys know, in Abyss 11.3, there's a Hydro debuff, making your cooldowns exceptionally long. As you can see, when I use my E on Chongyun, when I'm affected by this Hydro debuff, the cooldown is insanely long. But what you can do is actually wait for the Hydro debuff to wear off. You can use cleanses, but they're hard to time and they're annoying. But generally speaking, you can run not only the Prayer of Destiny, but also some other things to reduce your Hydro, uh, the time you're affected by Hydro. Now, before I get into the rest, I want to clarify this before I get a bunch of questions in the comments. First of all, this set you get, this one piece you get by killing the Oceanid boss. It has a chance to drop it. For me, I got two of them, uh, a purple and a blue one, within three kills of the Oceanid. So definitely go do that. Uh, if you want to. And the thing is, you can put these on your support characters on anyone but your DPS. And you might be thinking, well, why would I run a three star or a four star artifact um, for Abyss 11, right? It's hard content. I'm losing out on a lot of stats. Well, yes. And that's why you shouldn't run it on your DPS. But for your shield breakers, like your supports, let's say Diona, who's your healer, or even Chongyun, who's just there to break shields, it really doesn't matter at all. Because while you are losing out on some stats, some damage or whatever, it doesn't matter because you're using this character to break shields and shields obviously don't care how much damage you deal. They just take forever to break. So for that reason, I recommend this one piece set and I think it could be very useful. However, that's not all. You can actually reduce your hydro uh, uptime or how long you're affected by hydro for even less with this high voltage electro resonance. So if you are running two electro characters, for example, Razor DPS with Fischl and then you chuck a Chongyun in there, and Chongyun is your designated like shield destroyer, then you're going to be affected by Hydro another 40% less uh, less often, which means you can literally just wait it out very quickly and then press your E. So having this just makes it a lot easier for Chongyun to avoid insanely long cooldowns, letting you use your cooldown more often, break the shield uh, faster, and get more stars. And before we get into it, I want to clarify that the reason we're waiting for the Hydro debuff to wear off and basically reducing how long we're affected by it is because there isn't really a good Hydro uh, cleanse in the game. You can use Jean or Bennett, and by the way, Diona doesn't self-cleanse, but you can use cleansers like these, but it does take a few ticks of their ult and it can be slow. Uh, it is a strategy that can work, so I do want to mention it. You can cleanse, but, but hydro cleansing can be annoying and can take a while. So now let me show you guys what I mean and how to do it. So as you guys saw in the last clip, if I were to press my E on Chongyun when I was hydro afflicted, when there is that leyline debuff on me, it would have a 30 second cooldown. 37 actually. But since I, since I have Electro Resonance and um, I am running the Talisman, it doesn't last for that long. See, it just uh, wore off. And now if I press it, it has a 14 second cooldown, which is much less than 37. And the way to see if you are hydro afflicted or not, if you look on the right hand side, and my characters died trying to explain this, but it's fine. If you look, you see the hydro symbol under my official. That means that there's the debuff. So if I press my E, oh, I guess you can't really see it with her, but if I press my E on Razor, the cooldown is much longer than it normally would be. So basically, you want to be using Chongyun E when the hydro symbol is no longer there. So just to reiterate, this symbol right here, when it goes away, where my mouse is, uh, like it just did now, if I use my ability, the cooldown won't be as long. I press E on Razor, see it only had a four second cooldown. Whereas if I use it when the symbol is there, when I am uh, debuffed by Hydro, then it will have a much longer cooldown, as you guys can see. It went from four to, wait, I went from four to 12 seconds. All right, so now both their shields are up. Uh, now, ideally, when I'm not Hydro-afflicted anymore, you look at the right side, wait till the Hydro thing goes away on Chongyun. 
I press my E on him, and ideally I hit both of them and freeze them both if they're clumped up. It is hard to group them up, even if you stand next to like a wall, it isn't that easy. Uh, but if you can, obviously it's much more optimal. Here it's not working, but it's fine. I'm still destroying this guy's shield quite fast, and my E cooldown, as you guys can see, is almost back up, because I used it, uh, again, when the ley line was not on me. And so yeah, even without Ganyu, this is very doable, you can 3-star it. I'm not going to include a full clear here because I want to keep this video kind of short, but basically if you press your Chongyun E when the Hydro debuff uh, goes away, and you just try to group them up and hit both shields at once, which isn't always doable, like in this clip, I actually don't and I still manage to get 3-stars, but if you can try to group them up by like standing next to a wall, if they dash to you or something, uh, that can help, and even if not, like I did here, but even if not, you should be fine, and you should be able to do this if you have good enough artifacts to pass the DPS checks of like um, the first half, and basically clearing them before the shield gets up fast enough so that you have enough time to clear the shield uh, efficiently. And uh, this is actually a clip from my live stream that I recorded, uh, which is why the audio is muted, because I'm just screaming in the background, but I am using 4-star characters on both teams. Uh, if we look back, even on my first half, all my characters are 4-stars, and with these two 4-star comps, I did manage to still 9-star Abyss, even without, you know, without Ganyu, without Venti, without Zhongli, none of that. Keep in mind, my artifacts are great, and I am well invested, but I am explaining to you exactly what I did to do it, and how you guys should proceed if you wanna uh, do the same thing. So in this video, I mentioned and went over the hardest parts of Abyss so far. So for the other chambers that I didn't really talk about, it's mostly artifact and team comp checks. But like 11-1 for me didn't pose too much of a problem with just normal team comps. And same thing with the others. Now, again, if you need help with team comps, I do account reviews on stream and in my Discord. But other than that, I try to give you guys tips for the hardest parts of this new Abyss, notably 11-3. And also, you know, uh, making sure you have a shield for 12-2 second half because of how much damage you take. Keep in mind, I will be trying to make a full Abyss guide uh, in the future. I don't know exactly when because I don't want to rush it. I want it to be as complete as possible once we've tested everything and we know everything about this abyss. So I tried to just give you guys a brief video on the best tips to clear this abyss to make it as easy as possible. And so honestly, the new abyss is quite hard, but it is doable and uh, I hope these tips did help make it easy for you. I didn't want to make a full abyss guide. Again, I'll make that later because I don't want to rush that. But for now, these are some really important tips for the current abyss. I still don't know what I'm going to title this video or anything, but uh, basically it is just me showing you a bunch of good strategies that you can use to make Abyss easier for you. Apart from that, physical DPSs are finally good again with this new Abyss, especially Abyss 11. So I'm looking forward to making a new Razor guide if you guys are interested, um, hopefully this week. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you guys in the next one. And so let me show you guys what I mean. Basically, if I press my E when my, I'm Hydro Afflicted, when I have the debuff, which would be on right now, it would have a 30 second cooldown as I showed you guys in the last clip.